Hey students, this is Lesson 8A, Factoring by Grouping. We're going to learn how to factor higher degree polynomials by grouping here. Go ahead and uh, do the vocabulary. You can check back with your answer. All right, so what is the factor form of 4n cubed plus 12n squared minus n minus 3? We're going to learn uh, how to factor this by grouping. First thing you'd want to do, though, is just to check all these, these four terms here and make sure there isn't a greatest common factor that we can first factor out. And uh, I don't think there is because uh, n can't factor out of everything, neither can 2. So, um, so we're going to just try and group these up. The first thing you're going to want to try is by factoring the high, the two highest powers together. So we're going to look at 4n cubed plus 12n squared separately from the rest of it, minus n minus 3, and see if we can't find a common factor that way. If I factor the greatest common factor out of those two terms, that would be 4n to the second. When I do that, I'm left with n plus 3. And, uh, and if you look closely now, um, n plus 3 is also a factor of these two if I factor out a negative 1. So I'm going to factor a negative 1 out of there, and I get n plus 3. And so n plus 3 is a common factor of both the first two terms and the last two terms. So now I can write this as 4n squared minus 1 times the quantity n plus 3. Now you just want to look at both uh, your binomials that you have for, for the factors and make sure that neither of those can be factored. But if you look closely here, 4n squared is a perfect square and so is minus 1. So that fits this form, a squared minus b squared, which we learned can factor into a minus b times a plus b. So my a and 4n squared, if I think of that as a number squared, that would be 2n times 2n. So a is 2n here. We're going to do 2n minus 1, and then 2n plus 1. And then we still have the factor of n plus 3. So factoring, factoring this completely, we have three factors. And that makes sense. Since we started with a cube, we could possibly get three factors. We don't always get that many, but it is possible. So uh, so we're going to factor by grouping. Go ahead and try that here, see if you can figure out what the right answers are. You can check back for your answer. Remember in the last problem, we were able to factor a little bit more. And here we can't because um, those that's a binomial and it doesn't fit any of our, our one form of a binomial that we can factor with a squared minus b squared. And that's because 2t squared is not a perfect square, neither is 5. So that won't work there. Uh, it says check your answer using FOIL, so that would be multiply these two. That would give us 8t cubed. The outers would give us 2 times 7 is 14t squared. That's a plus. The inners would give us 5 times 4t is 20t, and the last two, 5 times 7, are 35, and so it checks with our original polynomial. All right. Uh, what is the factored form of 3n to the fourth minus 12n cubed plus 15n squared minus 60n? Again, the first thing you're going to want to do is check all these factors and see if there isn't a greatest common factor we can factor out of there. That will make our job a little bit easier. And if you look closely there, you probably notice that uh, the greatest common factor of those terms is 3n. So we're going to factor out a 3n first and then rewrite that polynomial. 3n times n to the third is 3n to the fourth. 3n times 4n squared is 12n to the third. 
3n times 5n is 15n squared, and 3n times 20 is 60n. Now we're going to do what we did on the last one, and try. we're going to try and factor it by grouping those two separately from those two. So I'm going to try that. So I'm going to use a different bracket here. And um, the greatest common factor of n cubed and 4n to the second is n to the second. So let's try factoring out an n to the second. That will leave us an n minus 4. All right. And then if I factor out a 5 out of the second, terms there. That'll leave me with n minus 4 also, which means I have a common factor in there. And so I can write this as n squared plus 5 times the quantity n minus 4. And then just look at all your terms and see if there's anything else you can factor. That is a perfect square, but that is not so. And besides that, it's addition between them, so it doesn't fit this form, a squared minus b squared. So I think we're done. And to check your answer, you would just go ahead and multiply these out using FOIL. You would maybe do 3n times n squared plus 5 first, and that would give you 3n cubed plus 15n. And then we have to multiply that by n minus 4. So I'd use FOIL here. 3n cubed times n is 3n to the fourth. The outers give us a negative 12n to the third. The inner give us 15n squared. And the last two terms give us 15 times 4 is minus 60n. And that should be the same polynomial that we started with. All right, I'll let you try that. Follow the chart here to uh, factor 6h to the 4th plus 9h to the 3rd plus 12h squared plus 18h. All right, uh, we can use this idea to help us find the dimensions of a rectangular prism. Remember that a rectangular prism, the volume, is equal to the length times width times height. So there's really three dimensions. And if we factor this polynomial, we'll see what expressions represent those three dimensions. So we are going to look at, first of all, look for a common factor that we can factor out of all three of those terms. And it looks like the greatest common factor is x. So let's put, rewrite this using x as part of the product. And then we get 4x squared plus 12x plus 5. All right, now we have a trinomial to factor. And the way we do that is we multiply 4 times 5, which is 20. And so we need two numbers that have a product of 20 and a sum of 12. So, uh, and they both need to be positive because we have all positives in here. So 1 and 20, they do not up to add up to 12. 2 and 10, they do add up to 12. So we're going to rewrite this as 4x squared plus 2x plus 10x plus 5. Then we're going to factor the 4x squared plus the 2x separately. And that gives us, uh, let's see, we can factor out a 2x there. And that will give us 2x plus 1. And out of the 10x and the 5, we can factor out a 5. So we'll put plus 5 and then times 2x plus 1. And we get a common factor there of 2x plus 1. So that means we can rewrite this as x times 2x plus 5 times the quantity 2x plus 1.
So those are our three dimensions, our length, our width, and our height. I'll let you do that, and I'll pause here. Number 17 says, can the expressions x, 12x plus 2, and 5x plus 2 represent the dimensions of the prism? Explain. Uh, I believe they could, and the reason is because, let's say yes, if we did this, two, if we took these two factors, 2x and 6x plus 1, they would be exactly the same as x times 12x plus 2. It's the same thing. Both of them equal 12x squared plus 2x. So that would be another option for the dimensions. All right, uh, summary. Let me just label these here. You can pause here and try and figure these out first if you like. And the lesson check factor, the expression 20r cubed plus 8r squared plus 15r plus 6. To do this, I will use grouping because there's four terms, so you can use the perfect square trinomial rule. Go ahead and try that, and you can check back for your answer. And the last lesson check, can you factor the polyno polynomial 6 cubed? cubed plus 2 cubed squared plus 12 cubed minus 3 by grouping explain. Go ahead and try it. Follow the directions. All right, that's the end of the lesson. I'll see you tomorrow.